Hi, thank you for coming to the meeting. It's really important that we discuss performance management. I have given you a flyer to read and you have received this information. Yes? No? Yes. Obviously, there is a lot to digest on the brochure, but clearly it outlines the steps to performance management, which include scheduling, assessing, reviewing performance, gathering information, providing feedback, etc. There is a lot of quality information on the brochure, but we are here to discuss more than the brochure. We are here to discuss your performance. It may seem scary, but it's not as threatening as you think. This is just going to be an open discussion without any right or wrong answers. So let us move on to the topic of performance. What do you do that is the same or similar to what is outlined in the brochure? Uh, let's start with you, Anne. Well, I make sure I address areas of concern promptly and ensure that issues raised are dealt with. I try not to create arguments. If any argument arises, I use effective mediation to be able to resolve conflict. So you follow the steps of mediation? Yes, yeah, I follow the steps of mediation. Not as outlined in the brochure, but something in the lines of figuring out the issue and stopping it. But do you stop it yourself or do you ask for the two parties involved to stop the issue? I stop it myself. Give me an example of the types of things you say. I say to stop it or I'll fire you. That seems like a threat. Well, it works. They know I'm serious and are willing to listen on how to stop it. This is very confronting and goes against anti-legislation in a small way. You are using authority to stop the argument rather than allowing the two parties involved to stop the conflict. So you are not mediating, you are not listening, you are telling. That is like attacking the two people in conflict. You need to allow for mediation to listen and to get the two parties to agree on how they can resolve the conflict and stop arguments. This is a longer process, but it allows for those involved to stop the issue and agree on how to stop the issue. They are not being told or bullied into doing the right thing. They are being listened to and being asked their opinions before they figure out the best way to resolve conflict with an agreement. It may achieve similar results or the same outcome, end of argument, but it is a fairer way. Now that you raise the issue, maybe I should listen rather than tell the conflicting parties what to do. It is essential that you listen. Now let us go to you, Mark. What methods do you use which are same or similar to what is outlined in the brochure? I give good feedback. What do you mean by good feedback? And give me an example. I tell staff that when they are doing well, I tell what they are doing well and to keep up the good work. That sounds like positive reinforcement. Yes, it is positive reinforcement. And does staff performance improve? Sometimes it lapses. And what happens when it lapses? What do you do? I tell them to keep trying. That is positive. However, I think some constructive criticism is needed. Do you think so? Yes, I think that you could detail areas in which they struggle and ways to improve it, rather than to just say, keep trying. They might not even realize what they are doing wrong or that they have slacked off, but you have. You need to identify issues, provide evidence, and give staff tips and how to improve performance, even if it is something they do every day. I never saw that. I just saw being positive with enough. In this instance, I would provide more than just positive support. I would provide details and ways to improve. I don't really want to overwhelm staff when they have been trying so hard to improve. Then you need to plan your approach that, so that staff don't feel overwhelmed. They should listen to what you have to say and support the idea on how to improve. 
You are not asking them to be perfect or to do things perfect right away. You are just suggesting on what they can do better and how they can do better after identifying what it is they are doing wrong. I'll have to think about that. It is all in this brochure. Now let us take notice of the steps the brochure outlines. Monitoring performance to meet organizational and legislative requirements. Why do we do that? To make sure employees perform to company standards. We want employees doing well. We want them to achieve success. We want them to reach high levels of professionalism because the company needs them to reach those levels to uphold company values and culture. So performance reviews take place once every six months at least. In these sessions, performance gaps are identified, areas of weakness have been investigated, evidence has been collected, and now the employee is being told that, that what they are doing wrong. These gaps need to be filled. Most employers take to dis disciplinary action to resolve disputes or gaps. This action stops employees from being fired, and it is necessary so that performance can reach satisfactory levels. Disciplinary action comes in the form of schooling, open discussion, and monitoring of progress to ensure employee is learning. If employee shows improvement, then the company does not need to fire them. If in the wake of conflict they resolve issues, then the company does not need to fire them. Actions have positive, positive re reaction and the company is safe. Any questions? It's in the brochure. There are five stages and they are identifying source of conflict, looking beyond incident, raising solutions, identifying solutions, and agreement. For most cases, the manager provides mediation rather than problem solve. They, sure, they ask what the issue is at first. They gather two parties' opinions. However, they don't come up with a solution. They allow the parties to come up with a solution and they support the solutions. The manager does not solve the problem. They let the people involved solve the issue and make firm agreement that the issue is closed. What about feedback? What are the steps? Again, it is outlined in the brochure. Feedback must be clear and concise. It must be easily understood. It must be positive, honest, offer valuable information, um, aid in the development of proper behavior or activities so that the employee can improve. It should not be biased, rude, inaccurate, or made of brush statements which are created on little evidence. It helps if feedback is positive and it offers constructive criticism. This is more positive than just giving feedback. Any other questions? No. Then that is all the discussion for today. Don't forget to take a brochure if you have lost your brochure. And please give me feedback via email provided. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.